Hi everyone and welcome to NCHC Between the Boards. I'm Greg Ankers. A very busy 30 minutes ahead as we look back on all the highlights from last weekend's action, including some NCHC play for some teams. And the results from last weekend lead to a shakeup in the national polls. We'll look at that a little later on. Plus, a St. Cloud State forward reaches a career milestone. But we'll drop the puck first on our Spotlight Series, and it was a top 15 showdown in St. Cloud last week as St. Cloud State, coming in 14th ranked, entertained 15th ranked Miami. The Huskies, through their first four games of the season, had surrendered just two goals. But they let in nine last weekend on the road, looking to bounce back at home this week against a Miami team that brings in a rather potent offense. And the Red Hawks knocked off the Huskies in the Frozen Faceoff Final 3-2 the last time these two teams met on the ice. And on Friday night, St. Cloud State gets off to the better start midway through the first two Huskies battling three Red Hawk defenders down low. And it's Patrick Newell who comes up with the goal. Take another look, Newell comes in back door as the Miami defense closes in around the goaltender McKay. Not enough to stop Newell as he makes it a 1-0 game. In the second, Mikey Acemon with a great feed here to Ryan Papa streaking to the net. That goal makes it 2-0 St. Cloud State as we take another look at the great feed. Right down to Papa who beats the goaltender there and it's 2-0. Move ahead to the third. Delayed penalty being called. St. Cloud State with the extra attacker on. The great tip here from Kali Kosala finds Patrick Newell's stick. St. Cloud State goes on to win 3-0. Charlie Lindgren with 15 saves in the shutout. The first period they did a lot of, they, they were kidding through you know, with, with, with their talent and, and, and it's hard sometimes because they got so much talent. But you have to have a good stick, like a stick on puck and poke it off. And I thought as the game wore on, uh, um, we, we, did a, we did a real good job. It was definitely an all-around team effort. Uh, all four lines were rolling. We didn't have to shorten the bench at all. All six Ds were going. Uh, it was a great team win. Saturday night, Miami would get off to a better start in the first. Freshman phenom Jack Roslovic gets the feed from Matthew Cato. And look at the patience by Roslovic near the net to finish the deal on this one. As we grab another look at it, Cato finds him down low. But the patience by Roslovic make that extra move there to beat Charlie Lindgren and a 1-0 Red Hawks lead. In the second, Mikey Acemont comes calling again against four defenders for Miami, throws it on net, and it gets through. Take another look at this one as this ties things up at one apiece right through the five hole of Jay Williams up and into the net. We're tied at one. Later in the second, more from St. Cloud State. Puck going to go off the skate of Will Borgen, but it deflects right to Patrick Russell for the finish there to make it 2-1 St. Cloud. Then in the closing minute of the second period, Kosala is going to get the puck, split the D, and he's going to win the one-on-one -on -one battle there. 3-1 St. Cloud State as they get the sweep on Saturday night. The second period was, was our best period because we got back into the game, and then we settled in. and and. You know, and you're gonna you're gonna protect the lead. You know, we're not gonna sit on it, but we're gonna protect it. We uh, we knew they were gonna come out hard, but um, we just talked to all. We had to work harder, get the pucks deep, and get to work. While the weekend did not go the way the Miami Redhawks were hoping, there has been one bright spot for the club so far through this early part of the season. That is freshman forward Jack Roslovic. Roslovic leads all NCHC freshmen in goals with five and in points with eight to this point in the season, and that includes three game winners. The Winnipeg draft pick has brought a lot of energy to Miami's offense, something that the players around him and his head coach knew he could bring to the table early on this season. The one thing that's impressed me about Jack is just his demeanor and the way he presents himself and his professionalism. Uh, in terms of how he goes about doing his business. So, um, you know, he's going to be a guy that, uh, along with Sean, uh, down the middle, that are going to be very important uh, pieces to our team. He knows the game. He's a great, great student of the game. He he reads the play. He anticipates the play. It's um, It's been fun to watch and also learn a lot from him. And um, I think uh, it works both ways with that. Coming up next on the program, we've got more. NCHC Conference highlights action, including a team on upset alert. Those highlights are next.
Welcome back. The Omaha Mavericks entered Kalamazoo last weekend with their highest ranking in school history. Number one in the USA Today poll, number two in the USCHO.com poll. But they faced off against a Broncos club in western Michigan that was hungry to get back on track after getting swept at Clarkson the week before. And Western Michigan would put Omaha on upset alert early on. Just five minutes in, Griffin Molino through the defenseman to Frederick Tiffles there for the goal, and the Broncos take an early 1-0 lead. Two minutes later, though, the puck bouncing into the Western Michigan zone, picked up there by Tyler Vessel, who feeds Justin Parizek for the goal. And just like that, we're tied up at one goal apiece. In the second, tied at two, Colin Olsen with the big save for the Broncos there, robbing Luke Nogard of a goal, keeping it a two-all tie. But later in the second, Mike McKee dancing with the puck here. Going to feed it to Sheldon Dries for the goal, and Western Michigan goes up 3-2. to two. They go on to win on Friday night, stealing the show in the opener, winning it by a final of 4-2. to two. On Saturday night, Western Michigan would score early and often thanks to a combo of Colt Conrad and JT Osborne. Here in the first from the port corner, Conrad feeds it to Osborne for the goal and a 1-0 Western lead. Two and a half minutes later off the faceoff, Conrad just going to skate in and score here for a 2-0 Broncos advantage. Then in the third, Conrad and Osborne going to go to work again here. It's Conrad ahead to Osborne who gets behind the D. He buries it for a 5-0 advantage for Western Michigan stunning the Omaha Mavericks and they weren't done. Later in the third, Nolan Laporte with the shot save is made but Sheldon drives there to clean it up. Western Michigan gets the win 6-1 as they sweep the number two team in the country. These are the kind of weekends that you remember and those bruises and that go away pretty quickly. But there was a lot of sacrificing going on out there tonight. Guys were stepping in front of shots. I mean, our penalty killing, I mean, Look at the offensive weapons they hit, have and how hard they shoot the puck. And our guys just kept blocking shots and blocking shots and sacrificing for the team. North Dakota retained its top ranking in the USCHO poll last week as they entered a weekend series against Colorado College. North Dakota off to its best start since 2002, taking on a team in Colorado College still searching for its first win on this season. And North Dakota was not going to make it easy on CC on Friday night in the first. Keaton Thompson going to come up with a shot on net. That one gets deflected right to Shane Gersich for the goal. Freshman makes it 1-0 North Dakota. Middle of the first, Bryn Chizik in the middle of everything here. Gets the shot off. It gets tipped in by another freshman, Chris Wilkie, for the goal. And it's 2-0 UND. In the second, same score. CC working a power play and Timo Kimmelhami with the blast from the blue line. Cuts the deficit nap. It's a 2-1 game. Brand new a game, in fact. But later in the second, UND skating shorthanded, but they come up with a three-on-one. Troy Stetcher leaves it for Rhett Gardner for the goal to make it 3-1 UND. Then in the third, Christian Wolanin forcing the turnover. Feeds ahead to Brock Besser. He buries it. Five goals by North Dakota on Friday night, all by freshmen as they win it 5-2 on opening night. On Saturday, a little bit more of a defensive flair in this one, but in the first, Christian Wolanin gets a shot from outside the circle here that gets by everybody, including the all-important goaltender, and it's 1-0 North Dakota. In the second, same score, Shane Gersich skating in. He's got a teammate there, but Gersich takes it himself and beats the goaltender there for a 2-0 advantage. CC would have their chances at the other end, but Matt Perinkew was brilliant. He had 29 saves, and he gets the shutout as UND wins and sweeps 2-0 on Saturday night. I thought it was an outstanding team effort tonight. It was kind of a grimier game than yesterday, and we kind of stuck with it, got in some penalty trouble, but ultimately battled through, and everybody really contributed tonight. Especially in the NCHC, it's uh, nice to get two wins on the road uh, early here. It's uh, such, a, such a hard league, and uh, it's tough to get points on the road, so we're uh, very happy with the outcome. Still ahead on the program, we'll tell you who the NCHC Players of the Week and Players of the Month are. But next, Denver and Minnesota Duluth skate in non-conference action. The fifth-ranked Denver Pioneers had a tall task coming off of their bye week this past weekend with dates at number four Boston College and number eight Boston University. A big battle in Beantown. 
Denver starting out Friday night in Chestnut Hill against Boston College in the second. Tied at one, BC on a power play. Teddy Doherty comes up with a long wrister here to put the Eagles out in front two to one. Later in the second though, back comes Denver. Trevor Moore with a nice feed here to Danton Heinen. In the circle, he gets that one to go to tie things up at two apiece. In the third though, trailing three to two now, but on a power play, Will Butcher with the snipe shot here for the Pioneers. And that ties things up once again at three goals apiece. Under a minute to go though, BC deep in the Denver zone and a scrum out front and it's going to be Matthew Gaudreau coming up with the game winner as Boston College takes it on Friday night winning by a final of 4-3. to three. Denver then goes to Boston University on Saturday in the second trailing 3-1. to one. Gabe Levin though maybe on the second, maybe the third, maybe the fourth effort here. Number nine gets it to count as he cuts the deficit to three to two. Later in the second, though, BU at the other end. Danny O'Regan feeding Ati Oxenen for the goal, and the Terriers lead it 4-2 after two. But in the third, Denver battles back. Will Butcher coming up with the initial shot here. Troy Terry comes sweeping in for the goal, and it's a 4-3 game. Later in the third then, Denver skating short-handed, but Quentin Shore's gonna get one two and three times the charm as he gets that goal to tie things up at four apiece, sending this one into overtime. In the extra session though, BU coming in on a three on two and it's Oxenen finishing with the goal there for the winner. BU wins it 5-4, Denver gets swept in Beantown. And it was a top 10 showdown in Duluth as the Bulldogs played host to UMass Lowell last week. The Riverhawks entering number seventh in the country while the Bulldogs entered number six. And Minnesota Duluth had the edge in this all-time series, having won 10 of their all-time 13 meetings against the Riverhawks. And we'll pick this one up in the second period of a scoreless game on Friday night. And off the faceoff, it's going to be Andy Walensky with a big blast from just inside the blue line. I can't oversell big blast enough there. It's 1-0 Bulldogs. Later in the second, Ryan Domowski in the slot, going to get the tying goal here for the Riverhawks as it's one all in the second period. Still in the second though, more scoring. This time from Duluth's Alex Ayafalo with the shot. It gets punched in by Dominic Toninato to make it two to one. That's all the scoring. All of them came in the second period as UMB wins two to one. Yeah, it's not going to be always pretty. You know? So you got to find, I'm proud of our team for, you know, going in the third period, winning a tight hockey game. Uh, we needed it. We needed to get some momentum going. Uh, huge non-conference uh, weekend for us and, and we got to be good at home so it's uh, it's good to get an, another win here. So the Bulldogs with a chance to sweep on Saturday night late in the first trailing one to nothing. Kyle Osterberg comes skating into your picture and gets the goal to tie things up at one apiece. Move ahead to the third now. Duluth trailing four to one but on a power play and Austin Farley's gonna put this wrister home to make it a 4-2 game. Less than a minute after that, Duluth back on a power play, and it's gonna be Brendan Kodak with the goal to tie to get Duluth within one at four to three. But later in the third, the Riverhawks skating into the Duluth zone, and Adam Chappie gonna shoot and score. And that makes it 5-3 Riverhawks. They tack on one more as they salvage the split on the road, beating Duluth 6-3. That leads us to our NCHC Players of the Week. Offensive honors go to Aaron Hadley, the junior forward from Western Michigan, who had a career weekend against Omaha, notching his first collegiate goal in his 48th game played. He had four points total on the weekend. Defensive honors go to Will Butcher, junior defenseman from Denver, who had two goals and two assists in the series out in Boston. Rookie of the week goes to Colt Conrad, freshman forward from Western Michigan, who had a goal and three assists in that sweep over the Omaha Mavericks. And goaltender honors go back to Charlie Lindgren, the junior netminer from St. Cloud State had his fourth shutout of the season on Friday versus Miami, stopping 48 of 49 shots on the weekend sweep. And Lindgren also takes home Players of the Month honors for October. He's the Player of the Month, went 5-2-0 in the month of October with a 947 save percentage and a 1.43 goals against average. He leads the NCHC in that category and is 10th in the NCAA. 
And Rookie of the Month honors go to, as we featured at the top of the show, Jack Roslevic from Miami, who notched eight points in his first eight games. He's tied for fourth in points across the NCAA. USCHO.com poll looks like this this week. North Dakota remains at the top. It's a shakedown from there, though. Minnesota Duluth is sixth. Omaha, Denver, and St. Cloud State check in at 8, 9, and 10. And Miami still clinging in the poll at number 19. The USA Today poll has North Dakota number one. Minnesota Duluth and Omaha at 7 and 8. St. Cloud State just checks in at the top 10. And Denver is ranked 12. Well, straight ahead, a St. Cloud State forward reaches a milestone moment. That's next on NCHC Between the Boards. Welcome back. St. Cloud State senior forward Kali Kosala is a success both on and off the ice. He's a 2015 All-NCHC Academic Award recipient and he recently reached the very prestigious St. Cloud State Century Club. Uh, he brings a lot. I mean, you could see it his first two years, just his offensive capability and playmaking and just everything on that standpoint. And last year, maybe a little down year. He was fighting injury all year and stuff. But now that he's back to pretty much 100%, I think, you, I think everybody sees it. We see it just day in and day out, how much more like comfortable he is. And now he's making those plays that he used to bring and stuff. So he's in for another good year, I think. You, when you come in, you don't think like, hey, I want to have 100 points. It's just you go and play and take game at a game at a time, season at a time. So I, I knew he finished last year with 99, and, and I was talking to him about it earlier this year, and so it was, it was nice to, to have that kind of burden off his shoulders right away. Despite a year full of injuries, last Friday, senior Cali Kosala added his name to the record books for the Cardinal in Black. It was, it was kind of, I was on the power play and I know we got a quick up and I brought it across the blue line and then I had a kind of a defender on me so I gave it to David Morley and he shot it and I was coming behind Kale and he tipped it on net and I watched it go off the pad and then it bounced right to me and I shot it. So I knew that Kale got the point. I didn't know that they didn't give it to him during the game but I, I knew they changed it after. Uh, yeah, I knew right away. I tipped the, tipped the puck. They screw stuff up all the time and I, I mean, when I was on the ice I saw Kale tipped it and uh, I didn't really recognize that it was his 100th. I don't even think even the coach knew it. So then I did a little congratulations to Kali on his 100th career point, so that was, that was exciting for all the guys. Kosala is now the 27th Husky to join the Century Club, which includes former linemates Drew LeBlanc, Ben Hanowski, Nick Dowd, and Johnny Brodzinski. Obviously, it's, if you think about it that way, being with them, that sounds pretty cool, but I mean, I don't try to think about it. I mean. When we're playing the next game, it doesn't matter who has 100 points, who doesn't, so. And we're not finished on the program. Just on the other side of this break, we'll preview the upcoming games this weekend. Plus, there's a change to overtime this season in the NCHC. The coaches weigh in on that next on NCHC Between the Boards. Welcome back. There's something different coming to NCHC play this season, and it involves overtime play. If a game is not decided through a five-minute five-on-five overtime, there will be a five-minute three-on-three overtime session before it goes to a shootout. And everyone across the league that I've talked to so far is on board with this change. Here are the coaches with their thoughts. I think it's great. I mean, the NCHC has uh, so many talented hockey players. It's going to be a treat for the fans. And most importantly, most games, and I think 98% of these games that go to three on three, are going to end with a hockey play. It's going to be a great goal, and there's going to be a bunch of great saves in the middle of it. We like to be progressive. We like to make sure that we're helping our players move to that next level. And if the National Hockey League's doing it, the best league in the world, we should be all doing it. And you know, I think it's going to make the games exciting. There's going to be rushes back and forth. People are going to be up on their feet the whole time. And it's just going to make an already great game in the NCHC that much better. Having watched it as coaches uh, through some of the junior ranks, uh, we've enjoyed watching it too. So we'll see what happens, but I think it's a nice change. And in terms of three on three, you're going to have to push the envelope. And when you push the envelope, that means something's going to have to give on the other end. So you better score or you better get pucks to the net. Because if you 
are off just a little bit, they're coming back the other way. I'm all for it, and usually what happens is in the three-on-three, -three, it, it gets ended pretty quick, and, and I think fans will like that. I know one thing. I'm going to have uh, three forwards out there. My top offensive players out there, there will be no thinking of... Uh, of uh, playing conservative in that three-on-three. Three. You're probably not going to play your whole lineup, but you've got nine guys that might get out on the rink, and, and uh, uh, nine to 12 guys that are going to be a part of it over extended period of time playing hockey. I think it's great. Fans are going to love it. Players are going to love it. It's a little pond hockey going on, and uh, you know, and you're going to see the skill. And I think it's exciting for our fans. I think it's exciting for our players. Um, you know, uh, and you know, you get to that point, it's a tie. Um, you know, let's let's enjoy it a little bit and showcase what what this conference really has. There are three series in the NCHC this weekend, including a top 10 showdown at the new Baxter Arena in Omaha as the eighth ranked Mavericks play host to the sixth ranked Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. That'll be our spotlight series next week on the program. Colorado College and Denver renew their in-state rivalry as the battle for the gold pan gets underway. Western Michigan travels to 19th ranked Miami and in non-conference action Wisconsin visits number one North Dakota. We'll have highlights from all those games and much more right here next week on the program. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the games everybody.